This is a challenging question. What makes this challenging? You need to use binomial theorem in order to answer this question. However, you don't get given, at least on the face of it, a binomial. It's not a binomial, it's a, what would you call it? It's not two, it's three terms, so you would call it a trinomial, I guess. Not that that matters, but that's what you're looking at. Okay. Now, because it's not a binomial, inverted commas, they give you a clue in the question itself, right? We want you to get this, and we say, treat it like this. Okay. Now, I'll just point out, if we wanted to make this question more challenging, if we put it at the end of the paper, rather than like sort of halfway through, if you encounter a question like this at the end, it would be totally fair for us to just give you the original question without the clues. Without the clues. Because when you think about it, you're like, okay, I know binomial theorem. That's the theorem that I know. You can see the clear clue that this is a binomial theorem question is, number one, it's asking about coefficients. Coefficients, that's what binomial theorem is all about. And secondly, look at that power up there. So the power of four, clearly they don't intend for you to just expand the whole thing out. The only thing that lets you access, you know, big numbers of expansions is binomial theorem. So there are enough clues in the question as written that you need to use binomial theorem in some way, which means, okay, well, I'm gonna have to identify, I'm gonna have to turn that thing, which is not a binomial right now, into a binomial in some way, okay? It does make sense to pull out the two plus x rather than pairing it the other way. Why would you pair it the way that's been suggested rather than say have one of them be two and one of them be x minus x squared? Why would you do it this way? Yeah, it's just going to become a disaster <laughs> to try and deal with this and this together, as you'll see in a minute. So it's better to pair these up, it's simpler, and then leave this complicated one. It's even got the negative sign as well, on its own as a single term. So that's why they have rightly suggested this to you as the way to go through. Now, let's start with what people did reasonably well on this question. And out of the three marks, it's three, right? Out of the three marks on this question, this is where people tended to get their one and only mark. If you think of this as this and this, you can write this using sigma notation. Okay? Now I'll make a quick note about sigma notation. I think you guys did a better job of this than most of the cohort, but we didn't do it perfectly. Surprisingly, sigma notation requires a sigma in it. Okay? This is like a really important part of sigma notation, which is why it's called that. Right? You have to write this out the front because you're saying, look, the thing I'm going to put here, I'm just going to put one term and I want a whole bunch of them. Right? Also, sigma notation requires boundaries, right? So you're going from the first term to the last term. What are the first and last terms in this case? Zero. Zero to four. Okay. So I'm going to add up, and now I'm going to state what the general term is. In a binomial expansion, there are always three pieces. What's the first one? The it's the NCR theorem, right? Which we call the binomial coefficient. In this case, what is n? Which row am I on? on the fourth row. Now here again was a point of confusion and I get like it's a big new concept and you're, it's terminology which you're not used to using. Here a lot of people put zero for the next bit. Why do you think they did that? Yeah, they, they just have this in their mind, right? And also it is the first one, so people put zero down. But it's not 4C0, it's 4 C R because this is one of the things that changes as you go from term to term, right? So it's variable, so that's why I use it there. Okay. For the next part, I already said there were three parts, three components. You're going to have varying powers of these components here. Okay? So I want you to have a think about it. Remember, a binomial expansion can be written in two different orders, right? With one of them having the powers increasing and the other one the powers decreasing. Now I want you to look at the terms we're going to have to deal with here. There's this term and then there's this term. Which would you like to make the increasing power? And which would you like to make the decreasing power? What do you think makes the most sense? Who wants to make 2 plus x the increasing power? Which is r, so it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Anyone? You do? 2 plus x? Let's just think about, if I made this, well, <laughs> if I made this r, right? What does that make the other component? 4 minus r. Four minus r. That's the other component there, and its power will be this. Okay. Now, if you are to go about it this way, let's think about each of these pieces and how difficult or easy they are to understand. Okay. This guy here, this guy here, I know how index laws work. We've been actually working on that 
recently. Okay, so here the powers are just going to multiply across. So this is going to count down four, three, two, one, zero, and then you're just going to multiply that by however many negative x squares you've got. Okay. By the way, note where the sign is. It's not out the front. It's inside. Okay. That's not too challenging. If you want to do it with this. It just gets confusing when you think about, like this has nothing to interact with on the inside and it's a pair of terms, okay? Only one of you put your hands up, but this is the way that I would do it. I think it's the simplest way, okay? Now, people got to this line. To be honest, you shouldn't really have received a mark for this line because if you have to the immediately preceding question, this skill was being assessed in that question. So it's actually pretty lucky if you get two marks for doing the same thing twice. We usually try and give you two marks between two different things. But we did this question so badly, I sort of felt a little <coughs> bit of sympathy. So I said, okay, you got to hear. A lot of people got to hear. So I'll let you have that. <laughs> but here's where we we're, we're all just sort of fell to pieces. Okay? At this point, you identified I need a coefficient of x to the 4. Right? That's what I'm after. Okay? So you thought, all right, I should pick a value of r that gives me x to the 4. Okay? Now, I want you to have a think about this. Have a think. Does r equal zero, r equal zero, does it give you an x to the four term? No. Okay. Yes. No, 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 no. In this case, no, right? Because of the way that I've written it out. Because think about it, if this is to the power of zero, you just get a constant here. If that's a zero, this is a, a two in here and a four outside, so what will the power be? It'll be eight, okay? So you have to abandon that. So you start to piece through. A lot of you actually started to um, put together an equation to solve. You would have either gotten, depending on the way that you, um, depending on the exact way that you phrase this, because it's more than one, most of you landed on two. Some people landed on one. There is a weird way you can do it where you can write it on zero, okay? Here's the problem though. All of you, almost all of you, except for one, I think, said, okay, I found the value. For example, have a look at this one, right? Does this work in our case? If I go to 2 plus x squared, just think about what that expansion is. 2 plus x squared. So that's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Yeah? What about this? What are you going to get out of this? Minus x squared. This will be negative x squared to the power of what? Remember, I'm thinking about r equals 2. So that, negative x squared times negative x squared. What happens to the negatives, by the way? They're gone because there's exactly two of them. Right? And then that gives you x to the 4. Okay? Now, remember, this whole thing is being multiplied by this. So I'll ask the question again. Do you get an x to the 4 term? Yes. And so you do, from this guy times this guy. Okay. These guys are useless to you, they make the power too large, but this one's good. Okay. But the problem is, this is not the only one. It's not the only value of r that gives you an x to the 4 term. For instance, if you have a think about, let's have a look at uh, r equals, well, pick another one. Pick another one. 3. No. What are you going to get out of this? This is a little bit harder because you're like, ooh, more terms, right? But you can still do this. Uh, think about your binomial coefficients, right? And then think about how many of each of these you're going to get, okay? If we're to the power of 3, I'm going to go with 8. So I'm going to do this times this. The next one along will be 4x, right? I'm climbing down the numbers and I'm climbing up the x's. What will the next one be? 2x squared, and the last one, x cubed. Okay, so these are all multiplied, and I'll get the actual coefficients out. Right? This is what I'll get from here. We're trying i equals 3. What are you going to get from here? When r equals 3, have a look. Have a look. It's, just, it's just negative x squared. Okay. Now, every term here will get multiplied by this guy, right? Do you get an x to the 4 out of this? Yes. And so yes, you do, between this guy and this guy. And this is what we simplified. This is why it was a bit challenging. You almost certainly either got one mark for here, or three marks because you got to the end. If you only got one of these, you actually made two mistakes, right? Number one, you missed it. You missed that there were other values that got you the um, actual x to the 4 term that you're after. 
But then because of that, you have simplified the question dramatically. There's so much less work to do if you only say, I'm just going to look at one of them and then I'm going to go home. Okay? Going through this process is where the work is and it's why you pretty much got one or three. It's very hard to get two. Because if you did all this work, you did end up at the end. And I think if you gather all of these, I think there are three that actually work. Um, maybe you want to jot down this. This is the way that I actually wrote it out. The x to the 4 term equals, and by the way, I said on Monday, a lot of you, are, not just a lot of you, a lot of a grade was violating the equal sign because they would write some sort of expansion, right? And then they would notice, well, I'm looking for only these things, right? So then the next line they would say equals, and then they would only write to the x to the 4 terms, and they just ignore the rest of it. Well, these things are no longer equal, right? So I'm stopping that line of working, and I'm saying, okay, now I'm only focusing on this part. This is what I ended up with. I've got. We just had a look at two of them briefly. Values of R that give you an x to the 4 term. There is a third one. Okay. So you can see when you've got 1, 2, 3, and you can actually see my values of R that are in the way that I've arranged them. Okay. Once you've got all the values of R, there was the second mark. That was the second mark. 1, 2, and then from here you can see which one is it going to be. This is going to be 24, I think, because 4C2 is 6. 6 times 4. Uh, what do we got here? 4C3, that's 4. So 4 times 6 times negative 1. There's 24 here, there's negative 24 there. So these guys exactly cancel, which leaves you with, what's 4C4? It's 1, so you get this guy. So the coefficient you were after is 1. Okay. So I said before, the rest of the parts of this question were quite routine. Uh, but this, there's lots of places to go wrong, so I'll forgive you if you had trouble with this one. Um, but not if you have trouble with this again the next time you encounter it. It's hard, but now you know how to do it. Okay?